Hello, I'm Buckle Blink, and I'll be explaining how to use the new variables inside the new Yeeps Back to Suburbs lab. So this is your variable counter. You can obviously, you can't set it to anything, so you need to use these. So this adds one, okay? So this left import right here, this adds one. This uh, blue import goes down one. So you can add one, you can do back one, that makes sense. Now let's say you add three. This back one resets it, okay? Now let's say you wanted to make your variable really big, so let's set it to 553. Set it, our variables turn to 543. This randomizer, basically you can set a, well first of all you have to set a minimum, which is just one, and then maximum, you can enter in 10. This basically will comparison. This is a comparison value. So uh, how this works is, let's say we enter five, okay? So if the variable is bigger than five, it will activate, correct? So let's set it. So let's set this to five. Uh, let's do six. Press it. This will light up since the variable is more than six. This is a less than var uh, comparison value, so you can enter in any variable, let's do 3, and obviously it won't activate since it's more than 3. So let's say, let's change it to 2, and set it. This will activate since the variable is less than 2. This is equals, so what this means is we can set, let's say... So, for this to work, you need to enter in a comparison value of, let's say, let's do 5, let's just do 50, okay? The block will never turn on unless the variable you have is 50. So, we can go to here, we can do 50, press it, and then this will activate since the variable is 50. So, however, this block works is it defines which one has the most amount of points. For example, Cyan has the most amount of points, correct? But let's say this one gets two now this one is has the most amount of points that's what a variable does and if they're the exact same then they're both first so that should make decently sense now we have all of these clocks and displays so you might be thinking oh you can make a clock and yes you can so how do we make exactly a clock so we can see that we have these new blocks and they correlate with color so basically this well, not show anything since it's the different color. Unlike a pencil like this, it will show something. Makes sense. So these are basically score points. These are so each of these little ones have a big, bigger one, being a two by two and then a four by four, two by four, four by eight. Makes sense. So basically, this one will count points like um like a baseball game, football game. This one counts more, so it's basically the center of this. And this one can track time since it has the two dots. Whether that be military time or such. So it might be wondering how can I use these for a um how can I use this for a natural clock? So uh this isn't it going into the variables, but if you wanted to make a clock, you can use this block, which this is one second, right? So now we have a working timer. So we have one, two, three, four, five. It's a slightly bit slower, but it still works. It still is a clock. And you might be wondering, well, how can we speed this up? Well, to speed it up, it's the same thing. You would just speed up this by making it that. As you can see, we can press this to go down and this to completely reset the timer. So, yes, you can now make timers inside Deep Science Seek. If this tutorial... If this tutorial helped you, please like and subscribe, and comment down what tutorials I should make more, and if I'm good at explaining tutorials. Uh, that's pretty much it. See ya.